All right, everyone, another nail in the coffin of the mythology of Neanderthals being dumb and stupid, basically lumbering brutes that just sort of pointed and grunted. They had art. They made beer. They did all sorts of crazy stuff. Turns out they also had tallow works, effectively. Over a hundred thousand years ago, there's a new archaeological thing, link in the description, uh, archived, of course. Over a hundred thousand years ago, they understood the concept of boiling bones, presumptively skimming the fat off of the top, which they would use with the rest of their food. This is important, because fat is important within the human diet. Fats, I mean, in the absence of a pharmaceutical laboratory capable of making chemical extracts for vegans and stuff like that, hey, vegans, by the way, you're still eating animal products. I hate to tell you, but it's unavoidable. We're obligate uh, omnivores, actually. Neanderthals had a diet which consisted of roots, nuts, and berries, and tubers, and things like that. Plus, of course, you know, primitive protein sources. Uh, they would have probably cherished grains when they could find them, because they would have been a bit sweeter. That's a good source of caloric intake. But this does not complete your diet. You need to have protein, and you need to have fat. They are necessary. <clears throat> Otherwise, you can get protein poisoning, actually. Uh, which most people have never actually heard of. You need to have fat in your diet. It is important to ingest. It's good for you to eat that ribeye steak, probably. Um, I, I'm a little bit obsessed with ribeye, you may have noticed, by the way. So they were taking the bones of their kills. So, you know, they'd butcher off the meat, they'd roast that up and eat it. But then they would take the bones and crack them apart with rocks, put them in a pot, and then they would boil them for a length of time. And uh, they found hundreds of thousands of fragments of, of bone here. Uh, and because of the nature of how it was being processed, this is effectively a primitive factory of sorts, or at least a workshop of sorts. So they would bring the kills back, or the bones back. Maybe they just carried piles of bones. And then they would crack the uh, marrow out of them, and they would boil it off. And then they would have fat. And so effectively, this is primitive lard of sorts. And they would use this for various purposes. I have a feeling that they use it for other purposes as well. But probably mostly it was dietary in nature. They may have just eaten it straight off. They may have even made, like, basically a primitive soup. You know, maybe they put herbs and, and vegetables in it or something and literally cooked off a fatty soup with a bubbly broth. It's entirely possible that they did this. So this shows a level of sophistication that even when I was a kid was not associated with Neanderthals. Neanderthals were reckoned to be the dumb lumbering ones, and archaic Homo sapiens were apex. They were so much more intelligent. I would show <clears throat> that in the archaeological timeline, as far as we can tell, the Neanderthals were making jewelry and paintings and using woodwind instruments and and pipes, actually, and things like that, to, towards the end of the Neanderthal period. This is a little bit before that. I think those remains are more from, like, 60,000 or so years ago, for the most part. They were burying their dead. They had an organizational structure that is far beyond what was reckoned before, and at the time would have been far beyond archaic Homo sapiens. What happened is that they were forced further and further south to the Ice Age. They lost the memory of some of their technology. This hurricanes to the box saga and things like that. That's just a theory I happen to agree with. They interbred generally with the uh, Homo sapiens that they found. You know, they interacted together and then they formed what became effectively the modern human race. Uh, if you can call it modern, it's still primitive in many ways. <laughs> Just look at people that are constantly on their smartphones and can't do anything else. Neanderthals never had that problem. They were too fixated on uh, sharpening their spear or something like that. Uh, Erg sharpens spear, and they just does it over and over again. Eventually, the spear tip is completely ground away into nothing. He's like, "Well, I guess I got to start over." Erg has to start over. Uh, so they had literal, they had fat works. They had, they had a fat factory. This is industrial in nature. This is primitive industrialism. It shows that they had to have had a central location where they were processing their kills. So they would fan out, kill an animal. Of course, you'd field dress it, I'm assuming. 
um, although they probably ate the organ meat anyway, uh, and then bring it back. And then, you know, once the meat was roasted off, you'd process all of these bones and you'd get a bunch of fat. And you get quite a bit, I'm assuming, from the bones of a mastodon or something like that. Hmm, a mammoth. How much uh, marrow is in the rib cage alone? Uh, it's probably like talons or uh, something like that. They must have been doing this all day. They probably had people dedicated solely. They probably had uh, a, a deviation of labor, a separation of labor, actually, uh, going on. This probably was not something that was migrational. It shows that there was stasis that they were living effectively, if not a sedentary lifestyle, certainly not in the physical sense, uh, at the very least they had locations where they would congregate on a regular basis, which effectively were early settlements. So this is not a group of, of idiots wandering around, killing anything in their path, and then pointing and grunting at it, and then just eating the raw meat. These are people that were deliberately they they realized that the bones were still useful and they didn't just use it for jewelry in fact uh, they were probably discarding most of the bones um, after they chopped them into pieces and then piled them in the soup so to speak they may have been the first soup makers which makes me give them even more credit keeping in mind um, people of caucasian and asian diaspora tend to have a significant proportion of neanderthal dna well that's very interesting now, isn't it? That's about all. Peace out.